Hello? Mrs. Martell? Who, who is this? Dr. Varney. Oh. Who do you think it was? I, I thought... Never mind. What do you want, Varney? Don't you know? I think you're pretty clever, don't you? What do you mean? That was Archer's own money you gave me last night. That 50000 Barney, are you insane? Don't you realize you're talking over an open phone? I only realize I murdered Archer for you for nothing. That 50000 I can't use. The serial numbers have been broadcast. My dear Barney, I haven't the faintest notion what you're talking oh, about. How clever you are, Sarah Martell. How clever. And how dangerous. Yes, too dangerous to live. <laughs> The medical examiner's all through with the body, Inspector. All right, O'Connor, all right. Then I guess we're finished, too. Tell Mike to be careful with the body. And uh, put down in your report, dead on arrival, murdered by person or persons unknown. I'll sign it when I get downtown. Ah, she was a beautiful woman, O'Connor. It's a tough way to die. A tough way indeed, Inspector. Uh, how's Mr. Martell taking it? Like a trooper, sir. Here he comes now with his doctor. Hmm? All right, O'Connor, I'll, I'll see you downtown. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Inspector. Are um, you... Pretty near through, Inspector. Yes, Mr. Martell, the boys are taking the body away now. Uh, may I say, Mr. Martell, that you have my deepest sympathy in this bereavement of yours. Thank you, Inspector. Oh, by the way, do you know Dr. Varney? Oh, yes. How do you do, Doctor? How do you do a ghastly business, Inspector? Yes, indeed, and we'll do everything in our power to lay that murderer by the heels. Uh, in Inspector. Yes, Dr. Varney? Have you uh, any clues, anything uh, definite to go on? Well... If you don't mind my talking about it now, Mr. Martell. Oh, it's all right, Inspector. I'm afraid I'm going to have to listen to a good deal of talking about it. Might as well get used to it. A very wise and courageous way to look at it, Mr. Martell. Well, as I was saying, I believe it was a maniac. That's my firm conviction. A maniac? Right. Who but a maniac would have stayed in there to torment that poor dead body? Can you imagine a sane man first choking her to death with his hands? Then stabbing her with some keen instrument? Then bashing her head in with a blunt instrument? That was quite an ordeal. It was terrible. Uh, Varney. Yes? You hated her very much, didn't you? No more than you did, Mr. Martell. I won't deny it. It's true. You haven't been using your crutch this morning. No? Huh? What made you think of the crutch? Oh, nothing, nothing. A blunt instrument, huh? That's all right, Varney. I don't mind your asking. I was thinking along the same lines myself. Only it was the keen instrument I had in mind, say a scalpel. Now, now look skip here. It, skip it, Varney. I was just making conversation. Oh. You know, there's uh, something I, I don't understand. Yes, Varney? I, uh... Yes? Uh, well, uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing. Uh -huh. I know what you want to ask. You want to know who was the third man. Well, I... I'll show you, Varney. Uh, where are my keys? Here. Yeah. What have you got in that closet? A guest, Varney. Shall I say, an invited guest? You can come out now, George. The coast is clear. Oh, thought you meant to bury me alive in there. Tell, who's this man? Dr. Varney, George Monk. Shake hands, gentlemen. Huh? No? Very well. I, um, I thought it would be right for all three of us to be together for a moment. What are you talking about, Martell? Listen carefully, Mar uh, Varney, and you, George. Each one of us was in her room last night. A cumulative effect of our individual deeds has convinced the inspector that a maniac murdered my wife. But we three know better. However, there is one of us who knows more than the other two. One of us killed her first. I say first because the other two were not one whit less murderers for the fact that she was already dead. The three of us. We all did it. Yes, George. And I suppose that by checking each other and comparing notes, we could determine to the satisfaction of all of us just who took precedence. For instance, when I heard you move about in the closet this morning and turn the key on you, I had no way of telling how long you'd been in the house. And I don't want to know. Then two of us will always be in doubt. Exactly, Varney. Do you agree to it? Yes. And you, George? Yes. Then, goodbye, gentlemen. <laughs> Mr. 
Roma Wines have brought you Lucille Ball, a star of A Shroud for Sarah. Tonight's study in Suspense. <laughs> 